What up, everyone? I'm Rich Mays Lopez. And I'm Brendan Dunn, news editor at Soul Collector. I'm Matt Welty, editor of Complex Sneakers. We have two very, very special guests on the show with us today. We have Peter and Eric from Sneakers and Stuff, co-owners of one of the most successful sneaker, what would you guys, I don't want to say a chain, so what, what do we call it? Boutique? The chain has like a bad, has like a bad store. Store, store line. Yeah, store is probably yeah. good. There we go. In Europe, but now hopefully one to be uh, one of the most successful sneaker stores in New York City. And we'll get into that. This is our last show of 2017. Wow. This is it. We we're made honored. it. We're honored. We made it. We're ending on a, we're ending on a big note. Uh, I mentioned first in, in the intro, co-owners of sneakers and stuff, right? World-renowned sneaker store, recently moved into New York City. Congratulations, first of all, fellas. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to my home. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, they opened a store in Queens? <laughs> well, New York is my home. But first, I want to I want to start, before we even get to New York, just tell us, Peter, first, a little bit about sneakers and stuff. Yeah, we're uh, two guys that had a little bit too uh, big interest in sneakers back mm. in the 90s. We went back and forth to the US, especially New York City. Picked up stuff that you couldn't get in Europe, sold to friends. Started a store in 98, opened 99. Um, fast forward, we got 127 employees, mm -hmm. five doors, mm -hmm. five different countries. And where, where can we find sneakers and stuff globally? Stockholm, where yep. we were born. Uh, London, Paris, Berlin, and now Meatpacking District. New York City, gotcha. You guys started out as a hand-to-hand -hand operation, so uh, we're basically resellers, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to call it that. But we're happy you admitted that, because a lot of people come on the show and they don't want to admit that they were or are resellers. We were the the geekiest sneaker nerds in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. So like all our friends and even friends' friends and then like random people came into the store where we worked and mm -hmm. like, hey, I heard you're going to New York. Uh, could you pick me up a pair of shoes? Like, yeah, sure. What do you want? What uh, were they copying back then? <sighs> Not well, ones. their their Air Force ones. request yeah. was specifically buy me something that is not available here. Of course. Mm. Whatever it is, it wasn't like buy me that shoe. It was more like, can you get me something that nobody else has? We brought, <laughs> we brought home like 200 pairs of shoes at the time. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. Uh, now they changed all the, like you can't carry that luggage. How, how, how were you able to like figure out how much you would charge someone back then, like reselling shoes? We, we because had, uh, there, was, there was no like no, market so we, value. Like, yeah. We had a list, uh, yeah. people paid us like, let's say they paid us $150. Uh, so we had a name, size, what they wanted, and price that they wanted to pay. Uh, sometimes it was like the latest pennies, uh, and they they might be you know eight percent cheaper in jerseys. So we went there. Brendan, let's kick off our new section, please. Yeah. Other than the obvious uh, sneakers and stuff opening here in New York City, the next thing we want to talk about is this Kendrick Lamar Cortez yep. image that surfaced this week. He posted it himself on Instagram. This is the second we've seen of a Kendrick Lamar Cortez. A couple months ago, there was a leaked Nike product image. Nike later clarified with us that that was not reflective of the final version of the shoe. We're thinking maybe this is more like what we're going to see at retail. Um, there's not a lot of context around it. Chinese lettering on the toe, I believe that translates roughly to damn and then don't trip on the laces. Um, obviously, Kendrick is Nike's, can we call him Nike's biggest signing this year in terms of endorsers? Is that fair? I guess Virgil so. is not an endorser, right? His biggest collaborator. Uh, I, I put I put Virgil in a different category, yeah, yeah. I guess. Have they had any any bigger like acquisition in terms of celebrities this year than not than celebrities, but Giannis was a big one in terms of um, sure. Basketball. Yeah, but I think yeah. Kendrick moves the needle more than any sort of athlete. Show. Yeah, one hundred percent. And from the start, it was kind of assumed that they would do something with him around the Cortez because yeah. Cortez is Makes such a sense. West Coast shoe. He's rapped about the Cortez, and they're celebrating the what is it, forty fifth anniversary this and, year. And so. it's crazy that the brands keep on letting Kendrick go back to this like kind of gang theme, you know, where you had on the the Reebok Classic, you had the the blue and the red, and you clearly have like the set tripping sort of you know reference down mm -hmm. down the laces, where it's like brands are kind of open. You see like you know drug references on Pusha T sneakers that they're not really like towing a line anymore. They're just throwing it out in the open. You'd is the shoe any good though? I, I think, think it's dope. Kids are going to really? go crazy yeah, over this sneaker. Dope. I think it's really dope. I could do without this. Let me ask you guys a question from, I guess, from a European perspective. Kendrick is an uh, entertainer, obviously, as Brendan said. We always speak about on this show how entertainers have replaced basketball players or athletes as the uh, endorsers that really push a needle, as Matt said. Are you guys seeing that as well overseas? Of course. Of course. Yeah. It's, of course. I mean, it's a global thing. Sneakers is it's the same wherever you go, I guess. 
So is it, is Kendrick good. is Kendrick hitting in Europe yeah, as it, he's it, hitting it, in America? If it's yeah. a relevant shoe, because you know the first couple of drops they did for Reebok, they they sold out like like that. Yeah. The last, let's say two, wasn't maybe that good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think, <laughs> I think, I think it's a matter of that. that there's so many things happening. So many like they're just combining Kendrick and Nike doesn't necessarily make it an instant hit. It has to be a good product too. Yeah. So like, I think this will work, but. Uh, same thing with um, there was uh, like the Reebok Future <laughs> collaboration. <laughs> that's that's, 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 sneaker. At, like, that's, <laughs> like, that's the worst that worst too. sneaker of the year, right? But is I, it? I, I, I mean, it's, I mean, I'm just curious because like I, I, obviously we love Reebok. We worked Reebok numerous times, and you know, Future is such a big name. And then the product is just not all the way there, and just so it becomes is a it bit any pointless. Way it's, it's like it's like seventeen percent of the way. Yeah, there, I mean, it's like <laughs> <laughs> probably even less than that. So it's not even a just the endorser and just the brand. The product obviously has to be there too. Yeah, the product is always going to be key. Are you guys moving any Fury Cassis? Uh, no, it didn't really fly off the shelf. No, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> didn't fly off. Sorry, the shelf, <laughs> but it didn't. No. Uh, this week. In Jordan news, several big things came to light. First, the Katrina Air Jordan 3 is finally releasing. This is a sneaker that has been rumored for at least since Hurricane Katrina. And Encore uh, Air Jordan 4, which we spoke about last week, uh, is finally confirmed by way of Eminem on our own sneaker shopping. But I remember you're like, I I'll do anything crazy to get this shoe and there's only 23 yeah, pairs. Yeah, that, that so I So what, what's your plan now? Uh, I, you know what, dude? I didn't even, uh, not, I'd rather give StockX the $10 and walk away than give them $10 and enter another fucking sneaker raffle. I am done with sneaker raffles in 2017. No disrespect to you guys, because I know you guys do raffles, but can't do them anymore. I'll give you the $10 or $20 and walk away. What's the wildest thing you would do to like get a pair of sneakers like this? Nothing, dude. I would, nothing, nothing at all. Really? The idea is that Jordan is kind of fine, either, Finally giving the people what they want, because we've wanted the Katrinas for a very long time, or are they running out of ideas? They did that last year, or this year, when, you know, this year was like kind of like the year of like taking the shoes that were all like what ifs, that like never released, and releasing them, and you had like Motorsport 4s dropped, nobody bought that shoe. Um, you had like the history of, uh, was it the history of flight? 13s? Yeah, you know, I mean, 13 wasn't the best choice, but like you had like that history of flight, and it's like they're kind of doing these things that have always been part of lore because they don't, they never, everyone wants what they can't have, you know what I mean? And then, but when you actually make 500,000 pairs of something and release it to the public, it's a completely different story whether it's going to sell or not. So, wait, are you saying that you don't agree with what Jordan Brand is doing? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> do you think? Do you think? But well, you saw you saw that well the other year where the True Blue threes dropped and those yeah. shoes sat on shelves. Yeah, it was a which strange I, moment to see. Very that strange. So yeah. it's like the Katrina three to me is not that much different than True Blue mm -hmm. as far as like actual like colorway goes. And I'm although Jordan Brand will be pulling yeah, back the numbers think, on I that think stuff that would a little be, bit. I think it'd be huge. You think so? the momentum? Yeah. yeah what's your perspective yeah, from think, a retail perspective? Because yeah, you're the guys actually moving these. Yeah, I think that that particular shoe is gonna be big for us. The Katrina is, 3. It's a wide 3. Yeah. And, and, and that's it. Uh, we oh, were definitely. surprised that the, the True Blues didn't go away. Oh, yeah. That was but like I, I, I actually think Jordan Brand did a great job this year on like re recreating the momentum and sort of like get the energy back. I, I, I hear you that. on the True Blues and everything, but the energy and the, the, like the type of product that you see coming out now and the demand for the product is totally different from just a year ago. So like building, it's one thing to like wanting them to create and go new paths or it's like they're just reprising everything. Is that the case now or they're running out of ideas? I don't like, I think they have to build some sort of like a platform to jump up to the next ledge. And like as said, I'm really excited about 18. Obviously I've seen a ton of shit coming out. We go, ahead, no, go ahead and tell us all the stuff you've seen <laughs> yeah, right exactly. now. Yeah, yeah, I, can tell no you, I went to SneakerCon last week. We were watching all uh, people's feet. Like, we were thinking, the brands should be there. Like there's 10,000 kids and that's sort of what's, what's happening. And we could see that roughly 50% of the kids, they wore Addy, which like for us coming from Europe to the US, that's like, it's been like this maybe for a couple of years, but mm -hmm. before it was maybe 99% Nikes and mm -hmm. the rest was and random. And Matt Welty was over in the corner with yeah. his. Yeah, yeah. 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 he is the 1%. 50% <laughs> uh, I'd say hype, 
hype at it. Yeah. Like lots of Jesus, of course, and NMDs and Ultra Boost. But you could also see that Jordan brand was bigger than Nike, which is pretty weird. Speaking of yeah. Jays, someone got their first pair of Jays this week? Uh, so it wasn't well, Welty. It wasn't me. Well, I, I had uh, actually. Uh, yeah, SpongeBob Dub Zeros. And Mosh made you these. I love my. Oh, oh no. SpongeBob <laughs> Dub Zeros. <laughs> Over the weekend, Tyler the Creator uh, announced that he had he had just tweeted, "Just bought my first pair of Jays, guys. We'll show you in a second. Like picture coming soon." And then he posted this picture where he's wearing the shattered backboards with a pair of uh, camo pants and. Uh, this is a good fit. And you immediately regretted getting rid of your pair. Yeah. Do you like it? Do you rate his fit? Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's cool. I'm not I'm not like out here like you know. I just certain things are aren't for me. Just like certain things aren't for you. Very I don't true. I don't think you should hate on people for liking what they like. I don't but either way, um, enough on that. Um, <laughs> Tyler the Creator, you know, he bought he bought these, and you know, as he's part of Converse now, he can wear Jordans. I don't think he actually went out and purchased these. He probably got. This is a conspiracy theory. Maybe. <laughs> How deep does this go? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I don't think a big like Nike endorser is actually going out and like buying like semi easy to. I don't know. Oh, maybe. I mean, how, how does that uh, sneaker shopping thing with complex work? You know, we see these guys sponsored by Nike coming to buy your Nikes. We can't tell like you exactly. Ten how times it works. the price. We can't, uh, we can't give away goods. the sauce. But <laughs> I'm just you know curious. I, I, I'm you know he might have paid. A thousand dollars. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, thousand dollars to him is probably a thousand dollars. His Converse this year was actually, he's sort of uh, responsible for sort of bringing them back. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was surprised. Re re really, really, really successful for as a retailer. I, like, I think like Tyler has that vibe too. Like he's natural. He's not 100%. like Organic, so you, yeah. you sort of get feeling that he might as well just walked in somewhere and bought the shoes. Mm -hmm out of like, love for product, whatever. Like, you get that feeling from him. Frank Cook, if you want to come on the show. What's up, Frank? And tell yeah. us whether or not you sent these to Tyler. We would love to know. Do you think that this is part of what you guys are talking about, a resurgence of Jordan, that someone like Tyler, like you said, who's so organic, and is able to connect with the kids on that level, is this part of that? Is this gonna help move Jordans? Five, six, seven years, brands went too big and too, like, over the head of the consumers. So now linking with people that are very true to like what they do, it's a way for brands to become, uh, I don't know, personal again, or like become among the people again, mm -hmm. so to speak. So I think like, I think it's a great look, it's a great, good move, and like you will definitely see more of that, more of that kind of vibe. Mir is for, Swedish for Mir is uh, Swedish more. more. I think, I think, okay. I think, I think it's funny that just to add it before going to the next, that I forgot he tweeted when he bought these, he didn't know what they were, they go, they kind of look like dunks. That's like, <laughs> yeah. that's like how he described his sneakers, kind of like, I just got some new Jordans, they kind of look like dunks, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Speaking, fellas, about uh, you guys opening up a store here in, in New York City, we want to talk about the retail landscape in, in 2017, 2018. We'd love to. What are you guys seeing right now that you weren't seeing when you first started? You know, obviously, the death of malls. They're, they're not that sort of mm -hmm. hype anymore. I think special stores, like, like uh, whatever, Dover Street Market, um, like stores that are doing something different, people will sort of travel to uh, before they travel to you know to uh, to a mall outside the town. But right. I think the the from what I understand, I don't quote me, but I, I hear a lot of you know big chains are like chic, just closed 150 yeah. doors. Yeah. yeah. So there's like all these small uh, sort of based retailers are struggling while we have the time of our life. <laughs> so it's. Uh, are you guys, are you guys going to take down Foot Locker? No, I mean we 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 bought a lot of stuff from East Bay back in the days. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys are worldwide, what you're flipping. Yeah, <laughs> we bought uh, <clears throat> white jade green Air Force Ones, like twenty nine dollars shipped. Eric got really friendly with customer service at East Bay. <laughs> yeah, shipped them to Sweden, uh, sold them for like hundred and fifty. That was good. Sold yeah. back to New York. That yeah, sold them back to New York. Yeah. Weird. Wow. Now I'd take down Foot Locker is a big thing though, I suppose. But I, I like what I see is that in a the goal retail, of yours like. Now? No, our if goal we, is to be ourselves. Like yeah. we're gonna do our thing. Right. If Foot Locker goes down in the on the way, like are they are they competition to you? Really? Like who is the competition in New York? Is it Kith? Is it Foot Locker? Is it Extra Butter? I, I mean, the, what, personally, I always felt like all the independent stores that sort of mean something. Mm -hmm. They they care for product. They care for storytelling. Combined, we will probably affect Foot Locker mm -hmm. or like the mall 
all of the work. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, I, I, <laughs> well, this is an internal thing, but like we made a wow like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. not really to look at competition anymore because you spend so much time looking at what everybody else is doing. Right. So you sort of lose track and stop focusing on what you should do. I mean, if you go back 10 years or 15 years in time, you walk down Broadway, you had, what, 20, five doors? Yeah, yeah. You know, so pretty close to each other. Yeah. Uh, they're all gone. Yeah. Like maybe Michael K is there, but mm -hmm. you know, all the others are, are gone. So it's a, uh, you know, you have, have to be good at what, what you're doing. You know, if, you're, if you're sort of don't get it, you, you won't survive. Survival of the fittest, I guess. Is there something that I want both of you guys answers? Do you think that Americans are doing wrong with sneaker culture, or, no, your, biggest uh, or your biggest pet peeve about American uh, sneakerheads? No, I, I, They're wealthy no. guys. He's a, he's American, but he's no, not, no, <laughs> he still I, feels that way. It used to be. I used to have a problem with the the the, the bad look of denim for like ten years. Footwear was good, but the denim looked terrible. Mm. Now it's getting there. My favorite blog of all time is what the fuck is Michael Jordan wearing? <laughs> of course. Yeah, of uh, course. you know he had great shoes, but denim uh, was uh, very uh, iffy, yeah, questionable yeah. pants. <laughs> yeah. So I, I gotta ask this, we've, we've spoken about this several times with several different retailers on the show. We had Jeff Staple, obviously from Reed Space Staple Design, yeah. and Stolly from A-Life. And we spoke about Nike and Adidas' uh, ongoing attempts to kind of squeeze out the boutiques with their own direct-to-consumer retail stores like Nike Store and Adidas Stores and their apps, Nike Sneakers and Adidas Confirmed. They're doing stuff like the stash now Nike is with their uh, geotagged releases. What do you guys think about that and its effect on the boutiques? I don't, yeah. I don't think it will affect boutiques. It will affect mall. Like, it will affect the mass market. Mm. I don't think Nike or Adidas can or should try to be the validators. I think that's difficult for them. Like it, and I, I think they're attempting to be. I think they are. I think they are. Yeah, I think they're attempting to be up it like a week earlier. Or, I think or yeah. two weeks they earlier. attempted yeah. to do that. Okay. And I see a lot of change just in the recent six months. And because we like spoke about at Nike Town and even at the Nike Town that they're opening in 2018, 2019, mm -hmm. they are going to be carrying the stuff that you could not get at Nike Town before. We had to go to sneakers and stuff to get. Yeah. But now we can go to Nike Town. So you're saying that that's not going to have an effect? Well, it's tough to say, of course. Obviously, like, if the shoe is too available, it's not a good look for anyone. But gotcha. if Nike Town has it and it sells out and then we get it, like, then that doesn't uh, really I, matter. I, so. I actually think some of the, one of the reasons why, I don't want to say Nike lost, but Adidas was gaining more market shares a couple of years ago was the fact that Nike dropped a lot of stuff via Twitter link or, you know, uh, like exclusive, like Red October, stuff like that, that uh, as an independent retailer, you, there was, sure, it was hype. Mm -hmm. Supreme got some stuff, but like, nothing was really released to, to independent retailers. Mm -hmm. And then Adi saw, uh, I guess, you know, a chance to sort of collaborate with tons of retailers, and all of a sudden, guys that never w had you know three stripes before, all of a sudden they sold that. Right. You know, in the U.S. especially, there were, there were not. There was like you know, maybe campus superstars and some others at Foot Locker, but. A lot yeah. of the sneaker boutiques, they never touch that. Each week, fellas, we like to look at the best of the worst things that we've seen in sneakers this week. My personal best of the week was two things. The first was the uh, Kobe 824 activation that Nike did. I am admittedly a very big Kobe fan, so what they did by bringing the MVP puppets back, or the MV puppets back, the GOAT uh, shirt and this uh, 824 Nike Air These Force nice. One ID. These are nice. Super dope. Which was crazy about this. I don't know if you guys even tried to cop this. I, I did cop a pair of Flex. But they sold out in under an hour, mm. these things, which mm -hmm. amazing for an ID sneaker. The second thing that I saw, which was super dope, was the Gatorade activation that uh, Jordan did where they put... I love Gatorade. No, I love Gatorade <laughs> too, but you're not a fan of Jordan More stealing special. your ideas. So what they did was yeah. they put... Uh, you said orange? Yeah. Really? Is I feel like orange Gatorade is for psychos, man. No, orange. No, lemon lime grew, is, but I, you I like lemon lime, don't you? I grew up on orange. <laughs> you know, back in the 70s, I was a football player, believe it or not, like soccer. Okay. That was like the, it's the only... The, it's all about the red. I feel I'm like sorry. it's blue, right? Red? Blue is ass. What? Blue? Um, the orange. Any, oh. Fruit punch is off. Anyway, so what they did was they put refrigerators in select 7-Eleven stores and select uh, convenience stores around the country, and you had to go up and 
put your phone on the sneaker, augmented reality, and you got to cop it. I thought that was an ill activation to do in 2018, to marry that type of technology and then marry the local sneaker culture, like going into a 7-Eleven. Imagine walking into a 7-Eleven, trying to keep yourself a Four loco, and then all of a sudden there's like a fucking Gatorade thing. You drink Four loco? What kind of psycho are you? I might. I also like red Gatorade. Anyway. <laughs> my, my worst thing this What's, week. But what, what do we think is better, the, the activation or the sneakers? What are we saying about the these activations. shoes? The activations. What are we saying about these shoes, though? Well, first of all, the Kobe shits were hot. What are we saying about these shoes? No, I have nothing to say about these sneakers. I, well, you could have said, yeah, I think they're great. I don't. Okay. He doesn't think they're great. My worst <laughs> thing. I think they're great. My, <laughs> my worst thing of the week was Adidas absolutely playing me. Here's what happened. I, 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 I Okay. I got the Yeezys on a confirmed app. Allegedly. Which I, I did. Oh. I did. Which I think the confirmed app is one of the better ways to, to handle hype releases also right now. Also trash. Got Can we them. talk about the cost to making that type of app? Sure. Like an independent? I'm it's sure it's so ridiculous. so expensive. People ask us, like, why don't you do like Nike do? Why don't you do like yeah. Nike do? It's like, yeah, why but they, they're, they're a like billion dollar figures. company. They spend like <laughs> billions on their apps. It's like, we can't do that. And there's still problems with it, because here's yes. what happened. I, I got the sneakers on the app. I went that Saturday, a cold, a, a brisk Saturday in New what York City. Brisk? Quite blistery. Um, blistery. I went to the Adidas store on on Broadway. Yep. I had my app ready to go. I had mm -hmm. my phone charged, as they suggest. Mm -hmm. um, no real line in there. Wonderful. Not going to have to wait in line. Step to the nice young woman uh, working there. Showed her the app. She looks at my name and she says, oh, uh, we don't have your size. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought I was confirmed. I thought I was reserved. What's going on that's here? What the, that's the name of that. I mean, right? Apparently, they didn't get all the sneakers, and so I had to go home without my Yeezys. Mm. She took my number down. First time a woman's ever done that. For sneaker purposes, though. Um, <laughs> she, as far as I know. Did you tweet okay. at Wex after this happened? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> um, and they said they'd call me, so I still have not. I, have they it's, called? It's Wednesday now. I still have not received a call from Adidas, but. Hopefully one day I will get my Yeezys that I did earn. About six months ago on the show was the same Adidas confirmed situation where they had us waiting in quite warm temperatures for hours trying to cover a pair of sneakers, and it was ass. Now at least you actually got your sneakers. I got I my didn't sneakers, get my but I lost sneakers, ten man. pounds in the process. <laughs> I want my sneakers. Send the man his sneakers. Wealthy. Wealthy. Worst thing, or it's a thing that I want to discuss a bit. Where I think it's a it's. It, it's a lot of people or some people are excited about it, but I uh, I'm not I'm not so hyped on the the Kith X LeBron uh, stuff. Mm. Um, I think it's it's a bit a bit weird. I think I understand coming from Ronnie Fi's perspective that he was offered a collaboration with LeBron James, which seems amazing. You know, from a retailer. No, thing. that is amazing. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, I I don't I think that them reaching out to him kind of signifies that. It says more about Nike basketball than it does necessarily about Ronnie Feig, where it's like, I feel like Nike, I feel like Nike basketball's been in a weird spot the past year or so, or yeah, the past two years. And, you know, it's like they're leaning heavy on like Ronnie to validate the product to make it cool. And I think that that's kind of, kind of awkward. Um, I don't think that the product itself really speaks to what the vision of Kith looks like. Um, I'm not saying that like he didn't design it the way that, but I don't think that the kid who's going into Kith is buying LeBron Soldier 15s. I don't know. Ronnie can sell water to a whale, so I don't really know about that. But I want to ask you guys your perspective. Welty said that Nike basketball, he's assuming that Nike basketball is leaning on Ronnie to make them cool again. But isn't that what brands do with sneakers and stuff? Yeah, I guess so. Right? Aren't they? I mean, they... if Nike came to us and said, "Hey, here's LeBron," I'd, I'd love to do something. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's amazing. I, I like the product aside, but the fact that Nike. All product aside. All product aside. But you don't like just, the product? Do you like the product? Uh, the LeBron shoes are too heavy for me. <clears throat> I'm such a fast basketball player. That's where so it is. I can't really. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, that's guy. exactly <laughs> what it is. No, but I love the fact that they they actually. I'm not sure if it's like I don't look at it as a desperate move. I think it's going to what we talked about earlier where like should Nike do their own retail and like be take over everything here they're actually showing that they care they care about the independent shop they care about like other brands smaller brands validating I think it's amazing that Nike actually reach out to somebody else like <clears throat> to to somebody like Kith who is probably big at from independent level but not compared to like a Foot Locker level. Yeah. So like it's still a very small brand and they reach out to them and collaborate on that. I think it's 
I think it shows a lot of promise on where Nike's head is at right now. <laughs> Every week we like to look at what's dropping this weekend and we pick what we would cop and what we would not cop. My cop of the week is the Altitude Air Jordan 13. I can already hear Wealthy's inner thoughts hating this sneaker. But to me, this was an infamous sneaker that dropped in 2005. When they retroed it in 2010 with the mesh on it, that was trash. So this is a much better representation of the sneaker that I could not get in 2005 because this sneaker caused a lot of sneaker violence and chaos and riots back then. And I'm glad that this sneaker is dropping and I'll be able to cop it this time. You're paying 190 for these? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not paying. You're paying. Them. You're paying for these. I'm paying for. You're, these. You are yes. buying a pair. 100%. I'm waiting for them, hopefully, to go on a little bit of a discount. Okay. Which they most likely will be. Uh, my cop of the week is the Pada Converse One Star. I just think there's a lot of good One Star collaborations floating around that are kind of going under the radar. Um, there's nothing super crazy going on here, but I I kind of feel like I should have bought more One Stars. Hell yeah. This They're year, maybe that's the marketing good working sneaker. on me. Super yeah? comfortable. Yeah. Good sneaker. Maybe I'll go down to sneakers and stuff in New York City, located yeah, at maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> or sneakerstuff.com. Or sneakerstuff.com. You're gonna have to come to the store. Wealthy, what are you yeah, copying yeah, this week? Uh, I'm going to cop this. My Polish grandfather would kill me for doing this, but it's a German Air Max 97 Army camo uh, sneaker. Um, I really, I really like, I really like the. I don't, I don't like any of these. I, li I, like, I love them all. I want them all. Size 10, please. This one, size 10, please. This one, to me, I always thought, you know, the... Also, Nike already did this idea years ago. Yeah. I mean, I'm not mad at it. Uh, I am. The, I'm the, mad. <laughs> they didn't do it in 97s before? Uh, they did, they did the range of it. They did the yeah. Air Maxes that were there the most popular. There was a BW. There was a... There Air were a couple one. one. Yeah. There was so, like, so are you dropping this? No, but I'm staying away from it. <laughs> Well, you know, if you if you look at the top, if you're if you're if you're friends who like always link you up on the Nike sneakers app, like magically pop one of these and like in your car. Would you? Wait, he has hookups in the Nike sneakers? Oh app? yeah. Oh uh, okay okay. Eric wore the the French one yesterday, and you know, there's a there's a Velcro the, the yeah, flag comes off, so yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> there you go. Don't do that. You one. don't have to set trip. Um, yeah. We but also I, look at what we're trying to drop this week, and Brendan and I are in unison in agreement in this. As we often are. Often. Six up. The City mentally. Pack Air More Up Tempos God, are an yeah. absolute atrocity. God, they are a travesty it. to humanity, and I cannot believe that Nike is even attempting oh, this. Brendan? So, oh, please make it stop. You know what? I'm happy that these sneakers are dropping so you guys can stop adding me on Twitter and Instagram with these fucking photos. I don't ever want to see these shits there were, again. There was a, let me get your opinion on this because there so was. So you don't like him? No, there, <laughs> there was, there, that great. There was, there was another uh, sneaker blog out there who said that there's nothing more New York City than wearing these sneakers, mm -hmm. wearing a Yankees fitted, mm -hmm. and going to a bodega and eating a chopped cheese mm -hmm. all at the same time. That sounds like cultural appropriation to me. Wealthy, what are you dropping this week? I'm actually dropping your cop. Okay. Um, and it's a pair of Jordans. Would you imagine that? Why would you drop these, Wealthy? But the thing about it is you wouldn't even be in the running to cop these. In, in what? In what? In any sense. So what I'm trying to say is I might, I might <laughs> I try to cop means. the up-tempo, right? Because I love that sneaker. But the NYC one is trash. So I'm dropping think, that. You I, wouldn't even be I interested in this. The problem is I remember like, I was working at... Foot Locker the second time that these dropped the mesh the mesh pair and I remember yeah. I remember the the craziness behind it and I don't think that this shoe is necessarily going to hit in the same way that the previous two altitudes were from like a kind of sneaker madness thing we've seen that sure. with 13s this year 13s is kind of the wrong silhouette for for Jordan at at the moment at least and I think that like when these sneakers are like that kind of like sacred sometimes to like certain people or whatever I think that keep them in the in the in the vaults instead of uh, kind of watering down their legacy. Okay. That's that's my take on but that. There weren't that many pairs out there back in the days, right? You uh, guys are coming through and just shooting all the wealthy's points down though. What's up with that? Yeah, I'm Let him live. Do you think that that shoe was were you a fan of it or no? I mean, I I uh, I love the French blue. But this mm. is a good sneaker. Yeah, it's, it's a wearable sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> take us to our mailbag, please. All right, before we get out of here, we want to take some user-submitted questions. If you ever have something you want to ask the esteemed full-size run panel, please do let us know in the YouTube comments section, on Twitter, Instagram. My DMs are always open as well, although I get a lot of them, so, you know, I'll get to you. Um, first, we have rsmith1986 on Twitter asking, and a lot of our retail friends handle this, who will have the better 2018, Nike or Adidas? 
It's from a, a from a hype perspective or from a financial from a, perspective? From, from are a, you buying stock or are you? Uh, we'll say from a hype perspective because that's more buy, what I we zero in on. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> I'm all Ethereum. <laughs> so hard to say, actually. Uh, I think I mean Adidas has been on a roll for a while. Mm -hmm. I think they are currently stumbling a little bit and mm -hmm. trying to regroup after mm -hmm. the, like the success that they had. So I, I would probably go with Nike for 18. Okay. Nike's if, back. Like, Pete. Yeah. I mean, since August, Nike is back. Uh, I, I mean, they were never gone. They were just uh, sort of added, controlled the uh, sort of the hype thing, I guess. But uh, you don't know nowadays because you got to say Adidas now, so we. No, yeah, yeah but I mean, we're sneakerheads. <laughs> we love sneakers. Period. I'm gonna say Saucony. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Speaking I'm, of crazy comebacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, but I think, uh, to be honest, uh, a lot of the stuff that we see that we've seen. This is just a, a, a small piece of what's coming out because the, the most of the stuff they haven't shown us yet. Yeah, it used to be quick. You'll strikes. tell us about be, that off, yeah, off I mean, camera. Yeah, <laughs> quick strikes and, and uh, you know these special drops used to be a few per month. Now it's actually more hype drops drops per week. Yeah. Why can't I get any of these sneakers though? What do I have to do to rig your raffle? <laughs> He's uh, lying. <laughs> He's lying. No, dead ass. <laughs> I can't lying. get these sneakers. Mm. I, I want a raffle all year. Depending on what you want. I want everything size 10. Next question in the mailbag we have is from Alejandro underscore 17. You guys got to make these easier to pronounce. Uh, will Nike basketball ever make a comeback? Ever? Like for, from ever for the long streets time, right? or like for functional purpose? I mean for the streets, there will be a, like a new, like, like there will new, be a new basketball vibe going on sometime. Not 18, I don't think so. Right. Uh, Couple but years it, down the line, like it all goes in circles. So like eventually, basketball as a functional shoe will have a street vibe again. Yeah, it might uh, take a while, but yeah, it's not tomorrow. No. Yeah. Um, last question we have: Old Coot on Twitter, always adding us, asking an appropriate one. What's your favorite Kobe sneaker? The Adidas yeah. Kobe Two. Yeah, that's your favorite Kobe sneaker. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, Kobe Nine Elite Low. <laughs> Kobe 9 Elite Low for me. I'm going to say the Zoom Kobe it. 1. Zoom Kobe 1. Do Fellas, you know I mean? can we go pre-Kobe, like the Flight 2 K4? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That, was, that was like, yeah. that like that was the shoot yeah. elevation yeah. type thing. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. that was that was an amazing shoot. That was uh, so good. But uh, I actually like the last low one. Was it mm, whatever they call it? Something Elite? The Kobe the, 11? Uh, was that the Kobe of 11? Nike? The, the, the looked like a runner almost. I forgot the name of it. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. A, I yeah. think that was a great shoe, even though people didn't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> Fellas, before we get out of here, I want you guys to let everyone know, in New York at least, where can we visit sneakers and stuff and cop some sneakers and stuff? Uh, 21 Little West 12th Street. It's actually 22. Sorry, 22. 22. 22. 22. Wrong side of the street. I know that. 22. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> it was a long night last night. Yeah, party, we actually right? had a really good night. After the party, we went next door. We saw. First, we had. Uh, after a, the show was after party. Yeah, place, we right? had. A, we had. You know, we had. We had a pretty nice lineup with. A guy called Nancy Jones came on stage. I've heard of him before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he and, and I are both from Queens. And Sorry, then where I, can we meet you guys online? Sneakersandstuff.com. Sneakersandstuff.com. Yeah, that works. Google it. Or at sneakersandstuff underscore NYC. Are open? open? Uh, no, but you can DMs slide into my DM open. if you have questions about sneakers. <laughs> so we we actually, actually sliding into DMs like going on today. Responding to DMs this year. So <laughs> it's, it's a thing. Eric? I want to wish you and Peter you. the best of luck here thank in New you, York City, you. which is kind of our hometown, because you guys started in New York too, right? Of course. We, we uh, Now we stay at the Standard. We used to stay oh, at the YMCA. Okay. Excuse me. So it's a little bit different. <laughs> oh, OK. I still stay in like the Motel yeah. 6, so whatever. No, uh, YMCA was great. Yeah. Shared bathrooms. That was like Bunk beds. <laughs> brick, <laughs> brick view. Brick wall view. I'm, that's rustic. I'm Rich Mays Lopez. I'm Brendan Dunn from SoulCollector.com. I'm Matt Welty, editor of Complex Sneakers. That was Full Size Run. See y'all in 2018. Listen, this is important. I need you to subscribe. They're going to make me keep wearing these fake Skechers Yeezys until we hit 50,000 subscribers. So please, subscribe to Soul Collector on YouTube.